welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tiffany. Today I'm headed off to the Goodwill outlet or the Goodwill bins in search for home decor. Once we've wrapped up shopping, I'll show you what items I ended up purchasing. I'll show you what I did with any project pieces I found. And in the end, I'll share exactly how much I spent. Thanks so much for joining me here. Hope you enjoy. If you haven't been here before, welcome. The Goodwill outlet is definitely a unique shopping experience. I would not say it is a luxury shopping experience. However, sometimes you can find those high-end luxury items at a fraction of the cost. They bring out items in these big blue bins. You dig through, pick what you want, and you pay for those items by the pound. Just for reference, at our store, currently they're charging $1.29 per pound for housewares. And here I'm over in the furniture section where they have larger items and these items are priced individually. Initially, I spotted these two canvases. Later, I found this one as well that just happened to be the same size. If you follow me, you know I like to keep things pretty simple and I like to work with what I have on hand. So after two coats of primer here, I decided to use our wall paint and paint the canvases with that. What you're seeing here is a little bit of an experiment. I do not have specific measurements for these things. I just put some of each in and mixed it up and went from there.
was mixing this up, I made sure to put it in a container that had a lid so I could store it and use it again later. After drying overnight, as you can see, it cracked a little bit. So here I'm just taking some of that leftover mixture and filling in the cracks. Before making any cuts to wood, I always suggest checking the end to make sure that it's straight. Sometimes it's not, so it's often best to start by cutting that end to make sure that it's nice and straight. One really simple way to upscale canvases is by framing them. Because that textured compound that I put on there was going to hang over the edges in some spots, I opted to have a frame that did not extend over the front. to take a minute to share about today's sponsor. A few months back, I added AG1 to my daily routine. If you're not familiar with AG1, it's a daily foundational nutritional supplement that offers 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that help to support brain health, gut health. It even helps to promote healthy nails and hair. And as a busy mama, one of my favorite things is that it helps to support the immune system. Since adding AG1 to my daily routine, I've been really busy and pretty low on sleep, and yet I feel like I've had a boost in energy. The flavors are extracted from pineapple core and vanilla bean, and there are no added sugars or artificial sweeteners. I was a little concerned that I might not like it, but I actually really do. I enjoy taking this each day, and I can't say the same thing for vitamins. If you're interested in adding AG1 to your daily routine, go down to that description box and I'll have a link there for you, or scan that QR code on the screen. By doing so, you can receive a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 as well as five travel packs with your first purchase. I'm gonna drink this and let's get back to it. I'm always impressed when I find something that's glass in the bins that's not broken. And when I picked this up, I thought it was new. After opening it, I think it may have been used before. In order to modernize the look a little bit, we ground off the curled part on the feet there. I've had some of you ask for tips on spray painting. My advice would be to pick up some type of a Lazy Susan or turntable at the thrift store that you can use for spray painting. This will allow you to keep your pieces moving as you spray them. And when you're spraying, keep that spray can back a little ways so the paint doesn't get oversaturated in one spot. That will help you to avoid getting drips. Also, it's best to do multiple light coats of spray paint versus one heavy coat. Temperatures can also affect your paint. If it's too cold, sometimes it takes a long time for that paint to dry, and again, it can increase the likelihood of drips.
this tray was really cute, but that top piece there was wobbly and I could not get it to tighten. You could of course use them as two separate pieces, but instead I opted to hollow out that part so I could get those two pieces closer together and get those threads to really lock in tight. often find items in the bins with normal Goodwill price tags on them. Sometimes they were tagged just a week or two before, but they ended up at the Goodwill outlet bins. So these prices you're seeing are not what I actually paid for them. And here I'm taking a wire brush and going along with the grain of the wood to try to deepen that wood grain a little bit. I picked up this greenery and this little wooden bunny a while back at the Goodwill outlet as well. I went down to the Dollar Tree and I found these jars for $1.25 each. If you have sticker residue left on an item and you don't have any of that goof off or goo gone or any of those products designed for removing stuff like this, I found that you can use WD-40.
Sometimes in order to make a piece feel a little more high end, I like to leave that raw wood exposed. It's tricky to do that with furniture pieces because of the use. So I think decorative pieces are a great opportunity to do that. You may recall the controversial oak table or plant stand that I picked up at the Goodwill Outlet a while back that I ultimately disassembled and created some other pieces out of. I had a bunch of these pieces left over. So today I'm going to be using some of them. had this fabric left over from doing a makeover on some ornaments. I would style this as I would a book to add height or some texture or visual interest and bonus, you get a little extra storage.
I then used my Cricut to create this. I've had this chalkboard paint for a long time. I've never had great success with it. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. After mixing it really well, I applied two coats. After drying overnight, I took the side of this chalk pencil and I tried to prime the chalkboard here. Even with water, it just was not coming off. So I then opted to use some leftover chalkboard from a previous project. thought my daughter's artwork was cute here. This is something my kids are looking forward to using for counting down to holidays and birthdays and vacations. I tend to shop off season. Very few people are interested, so it's a great way to find some great items. And I like to pick up little random items to stash away for future projects. Before we get to the grand total of what I spent this day, if you enjoyed this video, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Over on the furniture side, I paid $3.99 for that stool and pardon my worn receipt here, over in the bins I spent $66.60. This brings my pre-tax total this day to $70.59. If you would like to see more videos like this, I'll have a playlist linked down in that description box for you. And I'll have all products shown in this video linked as well. And don't forget to go check out AG1. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. I'll see you next time.